Wow, this is twice I've done this early. Oh, hello, folks! Welcome again, for I am the one, the only Hobo Tom, and I am almost all caught up on my wrestling schedule. The good news is I'm only, I think, two days behind. Well, yeah. Like two days, one day. I have that to take care of. That's, that's later. But you are here watching me because I'm not telling you, you don't want to hear about my issues. You want to hear about some professional wrestling. Let's start off with NWA because chronologically, that was first. Um, they start off with a whole new format. Oh, wait. Before I get to that, I have to give my shout outs. Tra-la-2. Thank you very much for confirming what I thought. You, sir, just for that, are that luchador on a forklift! And Kelt, thank you very much for your email. You, sir, definitely received, you won twice because you got the six count.
And with all that being said, let's like let's get back to some NWA action. Today they actually changed their format. Uh, this was the Circle Squared, where they actually have it's like a working man's promo, which is kind of cool. It's different. But what they did, let's see here, where was I? There we go. Oh, that's right. I started a new book. Right? Yes, I did. And the fact that they brought in two tag teams, <clears throat> and they actually had wrestling people comment on them. I think I missed that, because that was Tuesday during the day, this thing called work. But it was PJ Hawk and Luke Hawk, uniquely a father-son combo, taking on Tyson Dean and Jeff Lewis Neal. So this was actually different. They started off, both gave, gave a promo. They went to some in-ring action, and then they had kind of people critique the match. Just for that, I'll actually critique their match, and I'll tell you what, it was actually pretty good. Uh, Tyson Dean and Jeff Lewis Neal, they're good heels at, tag at the double team. I appreciate that. And then PJ Hawk, he obviously has a really good amateur wrestling background. You can see very basic collegiate moves. I appreciate those collegiate moves. That's always fun to watch. Uh, Tyson Dean and I'll just call him Jeff Lewis Neal. And they work good. They have a good belly to belly. I'd be hard pressed to say it's like they look like they've been doing this for a while. But they just seem so good. Uh, eventually the dad does get the tag again, makes a hot tag. But Tyson Dean and they, they were impressive. Not taking anything away from PJ Hawk and Luke Hawk. Tyson Dean and Jeff, Jeff Lewis Neal seems to have this ring generalship. Uh, the dad makes the hot tag. Uh, cleans house. Again, it's very impressive that, that PJ Hawk actually did a regular suplex to the bigger guy. Uh, Dad just, just starts going on, on the rampage, cleans house, clotheslines to everyone. This was actually a really good match. Actually, PJ Hawk and Luke Hawk won. I'll tell you what. That was a fun match. I like the critiques. Um, I haven't watched all of them, but I think most people are really positive about it. I'll tell you what, I'm going to be positive about it too. This was a good cheeseburger match. And that was it. Um, really, it was, I think this time was only a half hour show. I'm, I'm sure eventually you have to take a break. They open up with Melina saying, Ah, I've got enough to wrestle. Whatever, Melina. I just, I just want to see your big boobies. And <laughs> your bouncy little bottom. And then they close with a shot of the Crockett Cup. And that was NWA. NWA. And that's the end of this notebook. So there you go. Uh, so we're going to take one of three breaks, because this is a trifecta of a And now let's see if I can talk about some Impact Wrestling before I have to get ready for work. So Impact Wrestling is back in the good old US of A. They're in Las Vegas, Samstown Casino. Oh, it's good to see that. Uh, Rebellion will actually be, I think, the second pay-per-view I get to actually live stream. I think I'll take my suspension up uh, for WrestleMania, which is good. Unless I win those tickets, because there's no way I'm driving all the way out to Tampa. Spending, geez, I think like 300 some odd dollars between parking and ticket. Gas money. A snack. Dude, that's like a $400 day for a wrestling event. No wrestling event's worth $400. Not even WrestleMania. I can still remember when WrestleMania was like $35 for the extreme cheap seats. Oh, well. But with that, uh, Rebellion's going to take place April 19th. I will be live streaming that. 
or live streaming my reaction and maybe a few video clips from it. Impact, uh, they're a little bit lenient. I do have to keep to my nine count though. And a permit. So with this, we have Josh. The first match is Josh Alexander taking on TJP with the stipulation. Because Falabad defeated... Oh, what's his face? Last time, if TJP defeats Josh Alexander, TJP and Falabad will get a shot at the tag team belt. I think eventually. I know they're doing something this Saturday. I'm working late, so I won't be able to see that. But that's okay. I'm watching Big Trouble in Little China. While eating my turkey stroganoff with peppers. Oh, that reminds me to take that out of the freezer, too. But with this match, it was a very, for the most part, it was a very technical match. It's good. Uh, Alexander's definitely more strike heavy. Definitely the heel. You know who's, the thing in Impact, you definitely know who's working heel. You know who's working face. Uh, TJP, again, he did the Royal Octopus Hold, so a crucifix pin. Again, very technical. And again, the amazing counters, such as there was the octopus, the attempted octopus by TJP and Josh Alexander to turn that into the backbreaker. I want to see a backbreaking match between Josh Alexander and Roderick Strong. That would be really good. Again, Josh Alexander did the rolling Samoan drop counter to a crucifix by TJP. So again, you always have this flow, this dynamic. They have the constant movement. I'll tell you what, that's what makes Impact Wrestling a little bit more exciting. That they have a very near lucha feel with strong style elements involved in it. It's good stuff. Then the top row, the top row. Juji Katami by TJP. You don't know what a Juji Katami is. It's a it's a proper name for an arm bar when you when you stretch the guy's arm like, out like this, pull out pressure on the elbow, cap and shoulder. Nasty stuff. He did that from the top rope. A flying Juji Katami on a mat. That's pretty cool to see from the top rope. Wow, that's amazing. Whereas TJP flies, he does a course group plancha. And the and then Josh Alexander counter, gets back in the ring. He puts on a swing sleeper. So it's a sleeper hole, but then he picks him up and swings him by his neck. Oh, that has to tweak something. Uh, then there was the airplane spin. Talk. Picks him up, just kind of twirls him, tosses him off. Ouch. You don't really know where you're going with that. And there's a of forearms. The tilt roll backbreaker. Josh Alexander is going to become the master of the backbreaker. Maybe not the messiah of the backbreaker. And by the way, now that I think of it, WWE and X use that word messiah way too much. Uh, eventually, TJP. It's his turn, because then there was some weird botchy neck breaker. That's the only down part. And there was a kind of like a trap pin off of, again, it was a counter. It wasn't a true roll-up. It was kind of a trap. So that was good. A little bit different. TJP picks up the victory. TJP and Fall Ball eventually are going to get their tag team title shot. Yeah, this was a fun match. Nothing really to complain about. The, the action's good. It's fast paced. This is a surf and turf match. Then the next match we have. Let's see. Let me write this down quickly. Okay, six, seven. Six, seven. And hopefully I can get eight done. If not, I'll get it eight done tonight before the gym. But then we have William Mack taking on Johnny Swinger. <laughs> Johnny Swinger pulls the hobo tall move. He does a headbutt to the groin. Oh, and then just a bitch choke. Whoa, Johnny Swinger, you're fighting like a hobo. I like that. 
Uh, swinging for the most fun, he's trolling much. However, he goes up to the top row, misses a double axe handle. Again, old school wrestling moves. I, again, uh, nostalgia is awesome. And William Max in charge hits the stunner into the six star frog splash. William Mack wins. I'll tell you what, this match was fun. It was kind of short, but still, it's a good cheeseburger of a match. And then, whoa, <laughs> Madison Rain comes out in black in a black tutu. She looks like some cheap $2 Las Vegas hooker. Or lower casino cocktail waitress. Yeah, from one of those clubs. But she takes on Maserati. It's the name of a car. Wait a second. So the next match was, again, this is Madison Rain's Open Challenge. Uh, she starts, again, her whole promo, she starts to talk trash about Jordan Grace. Uh, she's won it once, not like seven or eight. Uh, so with this match, again, Maserati goes, actually starts really fast. Schoolgirl roll up to a crucifix pin and a small package. Interesting. At least she... Tries to go fast. However, Madison Rain hits that Northern Lights bridging suplex. Uh, then a ripcord cutter. <laughs> Josh and Don Collis. They have the best fan of this match. So I think Madison Rain is dating Josh. Again, it leads to good banter back and forth. Um, eventually, Madison Rain hits something like the detonation kick. I forget what she calls it. This, this, for the most part, besides the action in the, in, in the beginning of the match, was a squash match, but still it was kind of entertaining. Madison Reigns just over the top. This was a good ham sandwich. Then we have a Jordan Grace interview. Wow, Jordan Grace is amazing. Amazing looking, too. You know, that's one of the things I do appreciate more about Impact Wrestling than AEW. Jordan Grace looks like a champion. Ty Valkyrie looks like a champion. Madison Reigns been champion. They all, for the most part, all the women in Impact look like, even Maserati, look like, yeah, they, they look like legitimate pro wrestlers. They don't look like 90-pound Japanese school. <laughs> I find myself quoting Jim Cornette. But I have to agree with Jim Cornette. I mean, you don't have Riho. Uh, what's her face? The, the Freddie Mercury woman. She she at least looks like a woman. She looks like a professional wrestler, just old. Uh, the other one looks like she could legit be a pro wrestler. Riho doesn't. And Nyla Rose. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about Nyla Rose later. Uh, so Jordan J. Grace does an interview. Gabriella looks like a interviewer too. Uh, she starts saying to Johnny Bravo. There's there's a promo for for Ty Valkyrie. Is this Ty Valkyrie's goodbye promo? Will she be going? To AEW? Might she be going to AEW? George Morrison's in WWE, so it wouldn't be that far of a stretch. They tie Valkyries off to NXT, depending kind of who wins at elimination. The, the the NXT women's division stacked, top to bottom. So uh, I don't know if this is a goodbye Taya promo. Thank you. Who knows? Uh, eventually, if Taya does lose her her title offense. Or, um, I'm not tying the fence, but rematch. Yeah, she's somewhere else. RVD's there. Uh, Katie Ford's upset that, that no one liked her. RVD says, You don't want those losers to like you anyway. They're just mean people. And then Dog goes there. Oh, yeah. Would you like a, like a rematch? <clears throat> we'll try next week. Um, and then he speaks Spanish. When did Rob Van Dam learn Spanish? Rob Van Dam 
That was more Spanish than I did. And then there's a promo between Trey, Tommy Dreamer, and Tessa Blanchard in the back because they're going to get ready for the match. Then we have Mike Elgin taking on Eddie Edwards. Again, Mike Elgin's up 2 no. So with this, it starts off pretty fast and furious. Mike Elgin is such just New Japan pro. He, should, he has to go back to New Japan pro wrestling. Either that or his style is so different here. It's actually kind of refreshing. Uh, he does a D Death Valley driver onto the apron. The heavy strikes. Uh, Eddie does hit a top rope turtle stomp on him. But Mike Elgin, for the most part, is trying to go for a buckle bomb. He, get, he hits a super power bomb. That should have been the end of the mat. Proper. But now he wanted to go for the buckle bomb into the Elgin bomb. But nope. When he went for the power bomb, he got <laughs> rolled up. And the whole time, Moose. I know that's. Yeah. Yeah. Moose comes out next. But Eddie Edwards wins. So now it's two to one out of a best of five. So this is going to be interesting. At least it's only five. You don't have to, you don't have to wait seven weeks. And then we'll see what happens. Is that what the way the TV taping works? It would probably be pretty close to Rebellion, which I will be live streaming. Something really screwy happens. And next we have Moose come out. Because he's there to talk about the J. Chris Rhino match. Moose is saying, yep, he's propping up Rhino at the same time he's, he's saying, well, Rhino's never beat me, so he's one heck of a competitor. Or he he was one heck of a competitor in ECW. Now, yeah. Moose. 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 So this is really a very brawlish match. J. Chris, yeah, he missed a senton. For the most part, this was a glorified squash match of trying to re rebuild Rhino. Rhino makes his comeback. And Jay Chris gets a little bit of offense in. Uh, Dave Chris gets involved. They could have done much with OVE. A missed opportunity there, Impact. Maybe they might be. In, maybe they might come to NXT next. Who knows? They might be in NWA. Or OVE versus the Briscoes. That could be interesting. Honor. Uh, so with this, it would be Ohio versus everything. However, J. Chris gets scored. Really a quick match. Meh. It's a ham sandwich match. So then we have Susie and Jessica Havoc. Ooh, that's getting good. Susie! Susie's so cute, especially when she carries that. And then she's like, evil Susie! She carries that noose around now. <laughs> it's all coming back. Of course she sent uh, the, the Reverend James whatever back to hell! Son of a bitch! So that's getting really good. Uh, then Gabrielle... They cut to an interview, and then they're getting hacked by I ICU. I have no idea who ICU is. I hope they do let this build for a little bit, give us a little bit more hint versus, like, the um, scanning eggs at some places where, you, like, you, you, like, scan it, snap it, and then you get, like, a something. I have no idea how that works. Uh, you take a picture of it on your phone. I, I'm I'm lucky. I I know how to take selfies. And then we have Trey of the Rascals, Tommy Dreamer, and Tessa Blanchard taking on Reno Scum and Ace Austin. This was actually a pretty blasé match. It didn't do much. Uh, Trey starts off with Ace Austin, but Ace Austin's like, "Whoa, I don't want nothing with you." He tags out the heels. They, again, they're being heels. They isolate Trey. They isolate Tommy Dreamer. I mean, Jamie goes straight to Pity City. If you don't know what Pity City is, the move where you kind of rub your opponent's face into one of your more unwashed tag team partners' armpits, and it's probably just nauseous. Can they make it sound? But 
And they have the, the miss. Then uh, what's his face? Hit the miss, falling headbutt. Trey again. This allows him to make the hot tag. Reno Scum eventually come out to double team. Ace Austin gets in the action. Uh, Tessa gets a hot tag in. But what happens, though, is that it's, it's like a weird roll-up victory. Uh, Ace Austin, I think, take, takes the win home for his team. Reno Scum and Ace Austin win. It was really a mediocre match. It wasn't anything Grace right home about. It was a ham sandwich of a match. So overall, eh. Wow, cheeseburger, surf and surf. I'll say it was a cheeseburger of a show. And that was Impact. Again, Impact's, they're becoming a very consistent product, um, more so than WWE. Oh, that's right. I'm working. Hello, folks. Welcome back. Yeah, this is time for the right, third part of this wrestling trifecta. It's time to talk about some AEW. AEW. AEW, again, another amazing show. With, I think, the exception of Jim Ross. He just kind of brings way too serious a tone to it. But I'll get into that at a very specific point. But let's talk about some AEW wrestling. Let's talk about the Tag Team Battle Royal. Oh, wow. Battle Royals are so fun. Um, this is just a whole cluster mess. Uh, Kazarian, for the most part, takes out everyone. The teams are they have the Dark Order, Thunder Heart, SCU, Private Party, Santana Ortiz, Butcher and Blade, Jurassic Express, Best Friends. I think that's all of them. And the first thing, and I'll kind of go through the order, but who's eliminated at the end. Oh, the Young Bucks are there, too. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's your very typical cluster of a battle royal. Uh, they start they're really, really punching each other. Um, except for a couple things happen. One, Santana and Teeth don't get into late. The Dark Order members don't get into late. Because they're smart. They just like say, hey, you don't want to get involved in, until things happen right. Uh, Jack Evans, he is the one to be eliminated. He got caught. Uh, Kazarian just kind of takes out everyone for a while. Then you have see, finally Santana Ortiz enter, the Dark Order come in. And the bunny starts to distract people, and the Butcher and Blade come in. This was really good. I was kind of pulling for the Butcher and Blade because they haven't, they haven't won, I think. Which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, and then they were teasing. Uh, when Seema got eliminated, they were teasing the fact that the Dark Order gave Seema a mask. Seema took the mask. Didn't say yes. Didn't say no either. So who knows what Seema will do. Nick Jackson beats up everyone. Jungle Boy does the general antics. Uh, the Butcher and the Luchasaurus, oh, they square off. Oh, it's near a hoss fight time. And Orange, Orange Cassidy saved Trent. Uh, he was there ringside. Then they, the, the classic old school do -si do between Trent and Matt Jackson. And then they had the bonus hug because Trent couldn't hug Chuck T. So he hugged, so he hugged Mac Jackson, and then Orange Cassidy got got kicked in the nuts by the bunny. Ouch, that hurt. So that was, that was kind of the action, the order of eliminations. So here, the first team eliminated actually was SCU. That was a surprise. Then the Dark Order, 
Then Thunderheart, which is Seahawk and SEMA. Private Party got eliminated next. Hybrid 2 actually lasted a pretty decent long time, mainly due to Angelica. Uh, then Jurassic Express got eliminated. The Best Friends. The Butcher and Blade actually made the top three. So, so the top four teams was Best Friends, Butcher and Blade, Santana Ortiz, and the Young Buck. So the Best Friends got eliminated. Then the Butcher and the Blade, which was kind of sad. That's okay. And then Santana Ortiz got eliminated. And that was going to be the Young Bucks are going to face Kenny Omega and... Oh, I should be able to watch that. I just realized that. They're going to take on, too. You, you, the Bucks of you! They're going to take on Kenny Omega, the cleaner Kenny Omega, and, and the drunk cowboy hangman Adam Page. Baby! Oh, wait. Wrong, 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 ad, wrong, wrong Adam. That sounds so natural to say, Adam Page, baby! Oh, no, that's only for one Adam. And that's Adam Cole, baby! Uh, so, actually, that, I'll tell you what, that was an amazing match. This was just fun. Oh, also, there was someone with the sign, Free the Delete! Free the Delete! Free the Delete! Yes, it would be wonderful! when Matt Hardy eventually comes to AEW. Although, if they're teasing this, or if he's teasing this so much, I doubt it's really going to happen. They're going to screw that up somehow. And the only way it can be Matt Hardy is this, the broken Matt Hardy. Yeah! Comes into his amazing and beautiful life already. Do -do 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 -do. Playing the piano. Of course, there must be Brother Nero. Must accompany him. Yes, Brother Nero. Oh, yeah. But the Young Bucks win. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup. Because, again, remember, Kenny Omega is still friends with the Young Bucks. Hangman Adam Page, not so much. I'll tell you, as far as battle rolls go, this was fun. This is a, and it made sense too. This is a surf and turf battle royal. Then we have Shana, who definitely looks like cosplayer. Yeah, one of those two sexy cosplayers from Sailor Moon and the Seven Dragon. Oh no, that's a whole different genre. Um, I, I I mean she she looks like she's she's a uh, Shana Goku, Shana San from from Dragon Ball Z, because she does have the Turtle Hermit School patch on her trunk, on her bra, and she has the colors. Good for Shana. Well, I thought she was French for a while. They say she's Portuguese best kept best athlete or something. I thought she was French. Oh well, that's how much I know. They, I think, I think they've been changing things with the women's division so frequently. Most of the women's division in AEW is just a cluster mess. But she was sitting on from the Andromeda Galaxy, Chris Statland, and oh jeez, they are God, you're so old. This let them have fun. I mean, he's so straight. All he wants to do is talk about his barbecue sauce and beans. Just have fun. Uh, again, to start the match off, that lender. Boop! The referee. I don't know what that means. But for the most part, it's started off really a classical wrestling match. There's really nothing about this match I can complain with the exception of old JR's commentary. And it just sounds like old man JR, even worse than Jim Cornette. And I'm kind of interested to hear what Jim Cornette says about this match overall. The, the gimmick stuff, yeah, whatever. To hear, I want to hear him because I'll tell you what, I think this was, as far as wrestling wise, this was really good. Uh, and then. And then Chris Tetlin. Woo! 
Whoop. Shana. And of course, then Shana. Whooped. Chris Statlander. And they're having a funny back and forth with like, you know, boop off. This is why I like professional wrestling. It's absurd. And they have to keep it that way, no matter what JR or Old Man Cornette say. Some things Jim Cornette says I do agree with. Probably not about this matchup. This was just fun. And still, it was good. It was good wrestling. Then uh, then they, they it was a boop off. And, and then it got a little more physical. And, and then it just became the whole face. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's the old knee. The, the knee, which is awesome. The knee to the midsection. Uh, Shana comes back for a dragon sleeper. Chris Dallin did an amazing DDT. Oh, boy. Shana sold out like a pro. Eventually, Chris Dallin hit her move. The big bang. And I'll tell you what. This was the best woman's match. In fact, just, oh, I did. Yeah, this is the best women's match AW's put on so far. It felt like a wrestling match. Shauna and Chris, Dan, Chris, Statla Chris Statlander look like legitimate female wrestlers. To use Jim Cornette's word, neither of them's a 90-pound Japanese schoolgirl. Um, they're, they're both women, natural women, unlike Nyla Rose. But, so this was an amazing match. It was good, with the exception of JR's rant about why she's an alien, why she's from the Andromeda Galaxy. JR, you're an old man. Go back to your barbecue sauce and beans. This, folks, I can't believe I'm going to say this about an AEW's women's match. This was a surf and turf match. And then Nyla Rose comes out. Oh, wow. And they have a little Nyla Rose and Riho recap. I, Nyla Rose is a deeper deeper voice than me. I'd be scared if I, if I saw Nyla Rose in the dark alley. But then, of course, Chris Tatler went up there and booped the belt. They think she is the number one contender. And Britt Baker was there. Britt, Britt Baker. Oh, Britt Baker is useless. Only good thing she did is that she brought Tony Schiavone a cup of coffee, and and then like like he meant he asked if there was like the, the little blue pill in the coffee. Whoa, Tony, you're married, and Britt Baker's boyfriend is. Adam Cole, baby! Or, yeah, like a chillable version or something. And it was on a Star Starbucks cup with his face on it. Britt Baker's kind of still cringeworthy, though. Again, she's she's the fifth ranked, and, and she, she's never getting that belt, I hope. She gets that belt to, to AEW. And I might wind up watching NXT, which isn't necessarily bad. NXT definitely has their good matches. The problem is they also have their bad matches. And the good for NXT is amazing. The, the bad in NXT is terrible. But that's a whole other thing. Uh, so then we have, so then Tony Schiavone gets replaced and Taz shows up. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. The master of the kata hajine. The, the move banned in judo. Although it's not really. But it's done differently in judo. Uh, so Taz is back the announcer. Taz, 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 Taz. Yes! Oh, yes. He's so good. He actually adds a lot to it. Because in the next match, we have Jeff Cobb take, taking on John Moxley. And John Moxley comes out here with the eye patch and with the camo pants. 
He looks like Big Boss. All he needs is a like a constantly lit cigar, and he would be Big Boss from Metal Gear Solid. I don't know if that's his direction or if he's getting that direction, because I know the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega are big video game geeks. Nerd! Geek! And I, I hope this is of his choice, and I hope it ends kind of soon. But, so this was a good man. He also comes out with rib tape, too. It's like, again, the rib tape doesn't do anything. The rib tape's around his stomach. Actually, in this match, the rib tape was very bad. Uh, because it starts off very physical match. Jeff Cobb, again, class, classic near Simone wrestler, heavy striker. And then, of course, John Moxie goes, I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Who could shoot? Yeah, because they they just like running into that barricade a lot, and they they have a cheap barricade too. It's just the covering over like bicycle racks. And everyone's seen what they look. Like. And then they fight outside a lot. I was surprised they weren't counting out because they were out longer than ten, longer than the ten count. And of course, they go back in the ring, and <laughs> Jeff Cobb literally drags Moxie by his rib tape. Starts to take off his rib tape. Moxie gets strangled by his own rib tape. Again, another reason why any professional wrestler should never wear rib tape. Because it doesn't do anything, and it can be used as a weapon against you. Uh, then there's a twirling backdrop, and he, the way he lifted Mox up. Like vicious. Uh, Mox cut him. Caught him, however, in one move into a Northern Lights Bridging Suplex and a trade blows. Yay! Boo! And of course, he has Mox has that rebound lariat. And then Jeff Cobb, for the most part, no sold and just clotheslined him. And Moxley won by an inside cradle. Yep, Moxley's remembered how to wrestle in the WWE style, and that is Evan wins by roll up and surprise move. John Moxie wins in an okay match. It was a cheeseburger match. And then all the fun stuff happens towards the end because then, of course, the inner circle comes in. He gets to jump. Then Darby Allen, uh, Dustin Rhodes. Yeah, Dustin Reynolds shows up. I forget if, if he uses Rhodes or Reynolds. But then he gets beat up again because remember, it's still one, two, three, four. Yes. Yes, it's like six on two. And then Darby Allen shows up with the skateboard. He still has his kind of his necks all roughed up from what Sammy Guevara did to him. And he skates down there and starts to use a skateboard like a weapon, like from kids. Probably the worst movie ever made. It's like, why did I watch this? Like, this is garbage. Yeah, there's a there's a one scene where again the one kid just like whacks the other kid in the head with like the trucks and the skateboard. Whoa. And of course he of course so uh, he brought that as a weapon. Use it. And then we square off with John Moxley and La Champion. Chris Jericho and starts and we have a hockey fight out of the wrestling match. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And then, oh, wow. This was so good. Kind of could have been. I don't know why it wasn't. But we had the Lucha Brothers of Pentagon Jr. Cerro Miedo and Ray Phoenix taking on. Ay, ay, ay. Wow, wow, wow. The Hangman, Adam Page, and the cleaner, Kenny Omega. And the weird thing is, Page, Adam Page and Kenny Omega both come down to their own separate entrance. Mm, indeed. They're, they're just setting this up for, for a tease of a breakup. Uh, Ray Phoenix, he's amazing. He just, I don't even know how he did it. He just, like, runs the rope. And not rope running like literally like like so you have your three ropes here and 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 he just starts running along the top rope 
I have no idea how he does that. Uh, again, the stomp. But Paige, for the most part, is too strong. And then you trade chops. And there was amazing continuity. The chain wrestling from both teams was amazing. I mean, one was uh, Pentagon Jr. monkey flip Ray Phoenix into Omega when he was in the corner. The Lucha Brothers just starting literally to like dismantle poor Kenny Omega. Paige does get the hot tag, takes care of the Lucha Brothers for a bit, but then the Lucha Destroyer by Pentagon Jr. Oh, Lucha Destroyer is a thing of beauty. And I think the difference between the Lucha Destroyer and Canadian Destroyer. Canadian Destroyer is a very traditional flippy pile driver. The Lucha Destroyer is more like a flippy power bomb, where the person lands more so on their back and shoulder region versus being spiked on the head. Again, still amazing look. Uh, Ray again, he runs on top of the ropes to the and then then does a hurricanrana onto. I think it was Hangman and Page to the floor. That looked vicious. There was there was a brief miscue by Page and Omega. Uh, Page hit the the lariat onto Omega when he was outside. However, uh, Page, yeah, it was Page picked out the Penta driver on the ring apron. And then Page and Omega hit their combo buster move. It was like um, like a same level total elimination where Page does the buckshot lariat from the front and Kenny Omega does the V-trigger from behind. Uh, Page and Kenny Omega win. I'll tell you what. Match was utterly amazing. The Flay Mignon match. And then the Young Bucks come out. Hangman Adam Page wants absolutely nothing to do with the Young Bucks. He goes out there, he starts drinking beer from the audience. Like he takes a half drunk beer from some guy, drinks that, takes another guy's beer, says, Oh, here, I'll trade you full beer for half beer. Uh, just walks out. Omega's kind of happy with the Bucks. Paige says, we're going to fight the Bucks next week. So Paige is probably right. And then they start to lower the cage. And then now we have Cody Rhodes versus Wardlow in a steel cage match. The last of the requirements, or well, almost the last of the requirements. The second requirement for Cody Rhodes to face MJF at Revolution. Remember, Cody Rhodes still cannot touch MJF for one more Wednesday. And that'll be interesting because I forget how they did their go homes last time. Is that the show I got banned for? No, that was that was New Japan. Well, I also got banned from them too. That's that's the whole other issue. Other can of worms. Finally learning what I can and can't do. Anything on Twitch is good. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But again, the cage comes down. Cody and Wardlow go at each. Wardlow's obviously the, the bruising bounce, the bruising bouncer, really heavy strike, heavy. Uh, takes Cody's head to the cage. Cody, my friend Cody Rhodes, oh that forehead, ain't smooth no more, baby. He's he's gonna have that crimmed in the hair, just like my good friend Rick Flair used to when we used to have our matches. NWA and. WCW, baby. Oh, yeah, my boy's forehead it ain't smooth no more. It's all messed up. And he looks like a wrestler. That's good. Now, again, fun stuff. Cody Rhodes eventually hits the crossroads on Wardlow. And then that's not good enough, though. He goes up to the top of the cage and does a moonsault. Whoa. Trust me, that top rope's pretty tall. A cage, I want to say. I want to say it's about like 15 feet, give or take a little bit. And with this, I do like the. I'll tell you what, I do like AW State Steel Cage rules where you can't crawl out, you can't escape. The cage is there to, well, keep you in there. Like the Hell in a Cell is, except for everyone seems to escape Hell in a Cell. But 
Yeah, it's like there. There is no like swinging door. You have to pin the guy, pin or submit him inside a steel cage. So people can't get in, and, and the two people in the cage can't get out. So that makes sense. And then he does that amazing moonsault from the top of the cage. Pins Wardlow. Uh, Arn Anderson chases off MJF. I think uh, also um, the way Cody got busted open, I think MJF tossed, him his, tossed Wardlow his ring. Then eventually Cody got the ring after he got punched. He was threatening to, to hit Wardlow with it. Again, almost like brass knuckles back in the day. Because many a time I was hit with them brass knuckles, them brass knuckles, and, and my, I lost my smooth forehead that way, baby. But I'll tell you what, my boy, Cody Rhodes, his forehead ain't smooth no more. But this baby was a tough and tough mess, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, this is going to be one good big old slobber knocker, like JR would say. Again, this was a really good surf and turf match. Now, I'm amazed to say this. This was actually a surf and turf AEW Dynamite. And that was wrestling for the middle part of the week. Um, see a couple news and notes. I still can't do any live streaming. I still have about a month left. I want to know which is going to come first. My W2 from that stupid company that I used to work for. I don't want to necessarily mention names, but Kirkland's. Um, because I still haven't gotten my W2 from them. So I wonder what's going to show up first, which I've talked to IRS about, which is not fun, especially for them. But I wonder what's going to come first. Am I going to get my, my W-2 first, my tax refund, or is my suspension going to be lifted? Yes. So we'll see. Um, remember, I still have Saturday. I still have Friday's show. Saturday there's impact, but I'm working. Uh, Sunday, uh, Monday is going to be. Ooh, I have a lot to do Monday too. Actually, I have to do my mic Monday. But Monday is going to be the raw review. Tuesday, it's a double show. We have both. NWA and Impact Wrestling. That's gonna, that's one show, and then it's going to be a combination of my birthday celebration and Mardi Gras for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. They'll kind of have then they'll be over until about Easter. Uh, Wednesday is going to be AEW, and I think. Wednesday or Tuesday, I'll also put up my Super Showdown predictions and AEW Revolution predictions. Uh, I can't watch Super Showdown because I have to go to work. I'm off Friday. Friday will be SmackDown. And then Saturday, I'll give my review of Revolution. Yep, that sounds like a good So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see everyone, yeah, tomorrow. Bye.